Alec, what's popping? What's popping? Uh, I have no work life balance anymore. That's just popping. That's <laughs> not good. It's not good. No, it's not. It's not at all. It's been it's been a lot. Uh, my manager just told me today. Hey, I just put my notice in. So, <laughs> so he's he's feeling it too. Mm-hmm. Um, who's been my manager for the last three years? And uh, yeah, that's that's not great. Um, my our branch manager uh, quit a couple weeks ago as well. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's um, there's some they they need to figure some stuff out so, um, because there's been some very upset people at my job. So so what can you do? Is that you're at their whims? You, you can't ask for less, or is that not plausible? So technically speaking, so the way my job typically tends to work, for those of you who don't know, I work in pest control, and you're assigned a certain amount of works per day. And technically speaking, um, I can reschedule stuff. I can have stuff done. Like, I'm not going to have enough time to finish all the stuff. Today, for example, uh, I had two stops that I had already rescheduled, but I was still out working till really late today. Mm-hmm. Um, I was out past six o'clock and I start at seven thirty. and I've worked 10 hour days or 10, more than 10 hour days, almost every single day, this, every single day this, this week in particular, the week that we're recording this and I'm tired. I, I'm, I, I'm used to, I'm used to working long days in, in the summer. That's there. It's not technically the summer yet, but this is our season where it's typically gets really busy. I get that. I have to work some Saturdays understandable but it comes to a point where it's just it it, it's just kind of gotten hiring someone else was going to be a lot less of a strain than just cramming as many stops on my on my day as possible i have 15 stops tomorrow i know that doesn't necessarily mean anything for those of you that aren't in the trade for the most part anywhere between 10 and 12 in the summer is a pretty typical day but i have 15 Hmm. that's a lot that's a lot that for any time lot. of the year. So winter is usually slows down a lot more. You get more like anywhere between eight and ten, depending on your drive times, I guess. Um, so anyway, I I'm I'm be I haven't had any time to. So it was I don't know if it was in the last episode we recorded that was the where I talked about v, I talked about VTubers during that one, right? Is that the one where we got like really? Yes. I don't remember. I can't remember anymore. I I've, I've lost track of time. So it's I've been working on like doing to you. I kind of yeah. I can't remember nothing. I, I can't remember <laughs> I don't even know nothing. Who I, am. I don't know where I am anymore. anymore. So I've been having to work on this thing. We're doing a thing for my Oshi's birthday, and it's due on Monday. Uh, I have done zero work on it because I've had almost no time, uh, and I signed up for a bunch of stuff. I'm going to be busy all weekend trying to cram all that stuff out and get it done because I haven't had any time to really do it. I probably could have made some time in a few places, but I got to prioritize other things like the channel. And then I have like friends that come visit out of town, but I don't, I don't have a good balance right now. And I'm very, it's, it's frustrating. I haven't had any time to Something new Zelda just came out. New Zelda just came out mm-hmm. by the time we're recording this came out last week. We actually took, yes. uh, we we postponed our recording be- so that we could both go to the midnight re- launch of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that was a lot of fun, actually. I don't know what your experience was like, but. The midnight part? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did they have any sort of like party? Did they have like open the store until midnight or like how did, how did yours they sort did of do it? open until midnight, but I just kind of showed up. At 11.50, because I'd already, earlier in the day, I went and got my spot in line, basically. And I stroll up at 11.50, and, and you just get right in line in the in your spot. And it was pretty smooth sailing. I'm glad I got cool. my spot earlier, because there was kind of a lot of people there. But still, uh, they just kind of got everybody moving along. So I was in and out. They had, like, they had opened the store, like, or they said, oh, it's like 11.55. And they're like, oh, it's midnight, everyone, right? Yeah, yeah. And then... So I was like out at like twelve, pretty much twelve o'clock exactly, and I already had the game. So just in and out, They're like that. So I like that part of it, and then I, I got to play like an hour or two that night. Mm. But I've been loving that. 
I've been loving yeah. that game. I know the internet's been having a field day with it doing crazy stuff, but I've been not looking at it because. Yeah, I've been. Crazy. I. I've only I'm still in the tutorial era. I've played maybe 45 minutes of it total. That's all I've had time to do. Half an hour of that was the night after when I got back, <laughs> and I played like 15 minutes of it before I fell asleep because I was just so beat and exhausted. Oh, but um, it's wild. Cause... It's great. I love it. I love what I played so far. I really do. Mm. Um, it's wild because even and... if you had been playing just as much, we couldn't necessarily talk about it and because like you're yeah. doing completely different things like there's someone yeah i work the with world is who, so huge the world is huge there's someone i work with who was who got it the day of and has been playing it ever since we always talk about how you how you enjoying it and all that and it's like mm. you, you can only be vague and not really he's like did you go to this part of the map yet like no i haven't even gone to that <laughs> it's like we're in completely different parts of the map. So it's like you're talking about different games if you try to actually talk about it. It's like he's talking about, yeah. like, he's probably run into enemies I haven't run into and whatnot. So it's like just so yeah, much to I, sink your teeth into without even, like, yeah, you could not even pay attention to the story or go all in on that. There's so many. Yeah, games. I usually just scroll on by. That's typically what I, uh, whenever anyone's talking about it, when it's mentioned. Yeah online just scroll on by but people are pretty good about that though they, there's stuff is pretty telegraphed and i haven't seen any like people haven't posted any like end game stuff and people haven't like shown any spoilers or anything like that people i think people understand that this is like the most anticipated game of the year and yeah it it's i did they were just came out it's like the highest selling nintendo game ever like the fastest selling nintendo game ever rather like was 10 really? million units in the first week. I yeah, it's fastest the fastest selling, selling Zelda game. It's one of the fastest selling Nintendo games, period, too, I think. Mm. So, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I believe it. Which is which is kind of crazy when Pokemon is, is in the mix there. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah I don't like know if it's like... like... You can feel it even if you're not, like, in the thick of the discourse. You can just tell. It's like yeah. everybody's yeah. everybody's all about it. Yeah, both my brothers picked up copies of it. They've been playing it. Um, they they've kept stuff really vague, thankfully too. Um, so yeah, big moment it's for a, sure. It's an experience. Like you can tell, just from a couple hours in, you can tell this is a very this gives a very similar feeling. Obviously, it's pretty much directly based on Breath of the Wild, but it gives a similar feeling. And then it's like, oh, there's so much to explore it's like yeah there's nothing predictable about it you know there's everything there's so much new stuff not much is like carried over in like the same like power-ups and whatnot it's like so all new it seemingly yeah i think i i said after i after the first night i played it or i was like i've never been more like wanting to see where this goes next Mm -hmm. like it's been a long time since i've had a game that's had me that like I cannot wait to see where this goes next because it's just it really just hits you from the get go. I really like that a lot, and it's an extremely good hook. Um, and I just I just haven't had time, unfortunately. I, it's it sucks, but um, hoping after this weekend, after I get all that stuff done for 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 the birthday book that we're making, hoping we can just finally just settle down relax and play some zelda and that's what i'm gonna yeah. do especially with final fantasy 16 coming out next month i'm gonna actually take time off work for that so which i, I didn't have the foresight to do that with this so yeah i wish i could have done that yeah it's kind of uh overwhelming i mean similar to breath of the wild you just stand on on top of something and you just like there's so many things out there it's like what do i even focus on yeah, um, like I'm trying to loosely do one story thing, but then obviously along the way you're running into so many other things to do, so many mm. things to collect, and like it's just a lot, a lot. And the map yeah. is huge, so it's uh, yeah. it's nice though. It's like it's a pretty unique experience, I think for for mm. me. I don't, I do like open world games, but I don't really play them that often, and I'm not like that. Um, as into it as with like Breath of the Wild in this game, you know, you definitely yeah. don't think I'll have any problems finishing it. Uh, but it's like seemingly I have no idea how long it'll take to finish. I feel like I've put in several yeah. hours and I've like <laughs> not scratched any sort of fraction of this this game. Mm. It's crazy. Well, um, other game news came out recently. 
um, that really? I, yes, uh, and this is one that, um, if you've seen our games that define us episodes um, on this channel, we've we've talked about games. That, I feel like this is this is probably our biggest outlet that we've had for games in a while. Um, it's hard to fit in reviews. Um, we do maybe like one once a year, maybe a couple a year. It is they're just hard to fit in because it's hard to find time. I mean, it's hard to time, uh, it's, it's t- timing is really weird because like we'll be like, okay, we have this set date. We'll try to like fit it in, but it's like it can be hard with other games or playing for mm-hmm. other things. Uh, so the gents challenge, for example, which is another thing we like to feature on the channel. Um, and then, and then just generally like life stuff, just like it, the timing for both of us just works differently. So game content is hard to talk, it can be hard to talk about sometimes on the channel, but if you've seen, go back and watch our games to define us, you'll know that one of the games that I believe I featured on there, um, if I didn't feature it on there, I know I featured it on the games of the decade episode and that is one of my favorite games of the 2010s, which is Overwatch. Mm. Uh, big, v- extremely disappointing news came out about Overwatch uh, okay. 2 recently. Their PvE component, the entire reason why we have an Overwatch 2, canceled. Hmm. Canceled, and the corpse of which is going to be looted and uh, <laughs> put into seasonal battle pass content instead. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the last four years I've just been lied to, and it's not a great feeling. Um, it's not a great feeling. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's it's been a hard pill to swallow because, like, that's pretty much the only thing I was looking forward to with Overwatch 2. I played, I played it since launch. And not like not like regularly. I played it at launch, I should say, when they did all the rework, when they introduced this new free to play model, all this sort of thing. The free to play model is awful. Um, I, the battle pass is fine, I guess. Um, really, the 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 main selling point of that battle pass is the fact that you unlock the new hero in it. If there's a new hero that season, you unlock the the new hero right away, instead of having to grind out the battle pass for it. That's basically the reason to to buy it. And it sucks that they they sort of force you to do that in order to, to feel like you're staying up with the game. I bet you're just grinding out until you can unlock them in like near the last thing that you unlock in the battle pass, which I think is fucking scummy. I hate that. I think that's awful. Um, particularly for a game that always touted that they would never hold characters behind paywalls. Um, but that was an old business model. That was an old business model, and I understand that free to play has been extremely successful for them. Good for them. I think the battle pass is fine. It's a decent way to monetize. The thing that's not fine are the twenty twenty five dollar skins that they sell, which I think is stupid, and I hate. And I think they realize that they're not always they're not really the post popular thing, which is why they're trying to integrate the single player stuff, the PVE component, into the battle pass instead. Because the battle pass, I would assume something they can look at the metrics and say, yeah, that, those always do really well. They, they sell really well. Um, it just sucks because it's like, I, 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 on the one hand, I get it, and I have I can sympathize with the, with the devs themselves to a degree, the people that are in the trenches day-to-day working on this stuff, because it's like building out a single-player component for a game that was built to be a multiplayer game is a daunting task, and it's clearly the last... You know, they've been working on a lot of stuff. But, like, do you really have nothing to show for the last four years Mm -hmm. of development other than... Because they said, like, we're scrapping this, we're scrapping this, we're scrapping this, we're scrapping this. Basically, the only thing that's going to be still playable, we'll release these in part of seasonal packs, is going to be story-based missions. You're not going to have talent trees. You're not going to have replayable hero mode stuff that they promised. Is all this, all these features that they had promised and said, nah, well, we're mm-hmm. we're getting rid of this now to focus development on story missions. So it's like, what Overwatch has done in the present day with in, is when Overwatch Two came out in terms of their sort of like PVE component stuff has been extremely shallow. 
there's not really a whole lot of replayability to it. Which worries me because the story-based stuff was supposed to be like, they were touting it as this big replayable campaign that you could go through a bunch of different heroes as, get work on talent trees, and it's just going to be this big adventure. But now it seems like they're just going to dump stuff out in the, I don't want to say like laziest way possible, but the, the easiest way possible. And it's very disappointing. I, I've never seen a game that was as cherished and as beloved and as lauded fumble the ball so hard repeatedly and they continue they continue to fumble constantly and it's just so sad and so frustrating because this is a game i was extremely passionate about you you talked to me in like 2016 2017 i was playing this game like every day i loved this game and i i still am very fond of it but and i would love to see it do well but that's that's well, my piece on that. Sounds sounds brutal. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Is there is there like any game that you've had like a like an extreme disappointment sort of with in that in that regard, or is that is that just kind of a well, well not so much. No, not in that way. The only disapp- equivalent disappointment I would feel it would be towards the, like the company of like Nintendo and how they they treat Smash Bros and stuff like that. I feel like. Whereas, I've been like, treating Smash Brothers. Like I feel how they like actively also... push it out of Evo and stuff like that. Yeah, you know where that's like, like they're not even having to put in any effort, and they're fumbling that. You know. Yeah, I would say like, or how they handle IPs like Paper Mario, <laughs> right. for example. That'd be another thing. Or yeah, it's it's it is it's frustrating when they don't when you don't feel heard in this world, for real. But, well, that's, yeah. I mean, that was sort of the thing. It's just like, it feels like they, you read, there's a GameSpot interview where the GameSpot actually asks, like, really brutal questions where they're like, uh, so basically, what's been going on, like, the last four years? Or, like, or people are going to be really disappointed when you announce this um, type of thing. And and the deflective answers are just, like, so PR heavy. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's just like, yeah, hey, uh, it's so gross. Like, I don't know. Blizzard's kind of a shit company. They're they're kind of awful. Um, I mean, if you've been paying attention to the news for the last few years, you'd have heard kind of some of the really awful stuff that they has happened. The company culture is really bad. Yeah. Um, but this just sort of solidifies like that they just don't. Outside of the com- culture stuff, it's just like they don't know how to handle their games anymore. It just ever since that Activision merge, it's like they've just completely bungled everything and. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, just right up there with with Overwatch is the heralded phrase, uh, <laughs> the heralded series of games known as Five Nights at, Fr- at Freddy's, and uh, that's got a movie coming out. Did you hear about that? <laughs> Are you yeah, so excited? Yeah, I think excited? I saw. I uh, God, how? Why is it animated? Like, what is it? Maybe it'll be. Good. Uh, didn't I say that it's going to be on Peacock or something? Streaming Maybe. on Peacock. I'm pretty Maybe. sure I read that. It's a, it was only was a like, teaser trailer. All we all we see is your good our good guy Peta from Hunger Games. He's there, and <laughs> he's going through the Josh. Josh, what's it? Josh Hutcherson. Yeah, he's there. Really? He's he's he like <laughs> is he the guy he's who's through. he's the he's the janitor or the night watchman or whatever? I guess so. All this shit was like a little like retro style video of like you know. Uh, Fazbear's Pizzeria, or whatever. It's like come to Fazbear's Pizzeria, and they show the animatronics, and then it cuts to like, oh, it's, it's dark, and he's going through. <laughs> Hopefully, that would be funny. Funny if it was actually really oh, good. Oh, uh, jeez, it would be movie. wild if it if it was good, but I doubt it. Um, we should watch it for the channel we should though. Watch that, yeah. Yeah, it'd the be fun. Have you played it? Have you played any of those games? I played the first one, <laughs> like Same. back in the craze. You know, tried it out yeah, a little I've... bit. I played the first one probably in like the, the Halloween of 2016, I believe. Right up there, uh, that, that sort of time. Um, I played it and I enjoyed it. It was it was nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. I think I I Amazing. think I think the base the base concept of the game is really good. Yeah. Actually, I think that I think that it's. It's not like an amazing game, but I think like in just in terms of like it's very simple in terms of its mechanics and stuff. But I think. I think it's build up to the jump scare is makes it so makes it as effective as it is. I think I 
And yeah. so I can appreciate it for how well it did. I just, I just kind of wish that the internet didn't obsess over it as much as it did. Cause I almost feel like it just sort of like game theory. There's like 20, oh. 20 videos on it. How many? That's all I talked about. There? That's all, that's all Matt Pat talked about. Um, so let's see. There's, like now. there's four or five main ones. And then there's, um, there's a couple different ones. There's shoot. So there's one, two, three, four. Um, and then there is s- sister location. Sister location. And right. then, and then there's Maybe another one that came out after now. that recently. There's another one that came out recently mm-hmm. after that. I don't remember the name of that. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know. My FNAF questions. You know, an inside out. This guy is a walking, talking encyclopedia for FNAF. FNAF. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know. I know exactly. FNAF. Hey, FNAF. I know exactly. I know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Um. Who's your favorite? Who's your favorite? Oh, it's definitely Chica. Yeah, you're a Chica. She hits. Chica fan? I actually don't even know. I I think <laughs> I had an idea shit. at one point. One wolf, little wolf shitter, that guy. Um, what was it? Toy, toy. I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah, I Chica's don't know. I can't remember the names I remember of any of that stuff. Actually, Freddy, Chica, Freddy yeah. Fazbear, and then is, Chica. Is Freddy Chica Bonnie? I think Bonnie, Bonnie. was my favorite. There's a golden um, Freddy Fazbear. And there's golden Freddy. Yeah. He was pretty crazy. I remember that. Yeah, because he's, he didn't have eyes. Yeah. Or some shit. It's it was pretty spooky, wild. Spooky. From what I recall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, Five Nights at Freddy. That's kind of wild that they're, this is 20, 2023 and we're doing that. So. Mm. I don't know. Are there um, any other movies coming out that we should know about? I wonder if that Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel is still coming. Supposedly, I don't think I've heard anyone say that there's. It's not the new Indiana Jones, oh, true. Dial of Destiny. That's coming out. That is coming out this year. I haven't so. seen any of those. those um, any of the you haven't seen any of the Indiana Jones movies? Mm-mm. Maybe I should have t- picked that instead of Harry Potter. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. Um, you regret the last a uh, couple months of your life now. No, not at all. Actually, <laughs> they're very worthwhile. Um, if I could take it all back, I would. To play you any, know, Indiana Jones all. You know, one thing I did want to talk about, though, I don't think that because I can't think of any any other movies. I mean, I saw Super Mario. We reviewed it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I saw the it. Dungeons and Dragons movie. Oh, I went and saw um, the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I went and saw that with my parents yes, on Mother's Day. I haven't seen it yet. Um, it was good. I really liked it a lot. Um, I think the Guardians are probably my favorite. Probably my favorite Marvel trilogy. I, I think three is just great. So. Okay. Um, I, I highly oh, recommend it if you like the other two. Yeah. What would you want to talk about? Hey, uh, so just so you guys all know, uh, we are talking about Breaking Bad uh, for the next uh, however many minutes this is. Um, so s- check the timestamps ahead uh, if you want to skip. If you haven't seen Breaking Bad, I would highly recommend skipping ahead. I don't want you to be please spoiled don't. for this show. Please, please skip ahead if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you have, by all means, listen in. Um, we're going to talk about the, the ending and, and all kinds of stuff about the show. So, um, But you don't, do not, just, just skip ahead, if please, phone, if you haven't seen it. Do yourself a favor. If your phone or computer is glitching and you cannot pause it, chuck it as far as you can. <laughs> do whatever you need to do. <laughs> Throw it out the That's window. Right. I mean, That's right. That's right. Get it out it. of here. So, anyway, you have been warned. It's, it's just well in advance so all right i finished breaking bad and we never talked about it um the reason we never talked about it is because i didn't finish it until like maybe a few maybe like a week after you we like, recorded you had like last four so. episodes left and you were like i did i had like three episodes left <laughs> I, I had three episodes left and i and i just i it was one of those things where i just didn't prioritize it i had other stuff so how do you not how do you so not? i finally it's, finished it the ending is killer the ending is killer. In fact, it's it's one of the most perfect TV show endings I've ever seen. It's one of the most yeah. perfect TV shows ever made. It's it's probably the greatest TV show ever made. Um, I haven't seen Better Call Saul. I know some people are more in that that court. There's no way. Which is which is fine. No um, but Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad is 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 amazing. It's an amazing amazing show. It is. And I will never stop singing its praises. So. Not, it's a beautiful, not from here on out. Beautiful piece of work. It really is. Like, it was really amazing. 
the first couple of seasons, um, you you're kind of finding your your footing a little bit, mm-hmm. but there's still obviously there's a, a lot of gems there. There's a lot more humor in the first couple of seasons. I would say in the first season, especially, there's there's actually a decent amount of like kind of dark comedy in those, more so than it gets yeah. gets into later. Um, but I still really like the first couple seasons. So for sure, but it's one of those seasons where I, it was one of those rare shows where I feel like it actually gets better as it, it goes on, and like by the end, it's like wow, you are so you are so in, you're so dialed in, mm-hmm. and it's the beauty that's the beauty of ending a series like when it's intended you know it's like didn't overstay its welcome like five seasons for such a stellar show where it's like they could have milked it so much like obviously they have better call Saul from that but it's like just beautiful um do you give it exactly as much time as you need it feels like you know yeah yeah it was perfect i mean i i can't again i can't say it was i can't think of a tv show that had a more perfect ending it was just everything was just so well thought out so well planned out so well executed so well acted so well written Mm -hmm. everything was so on point through the whole show and especially like the the like the end just the end is just like i can't i it was so good so Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we can all agree that Walter White was a good guy in the end. <laughs> He's just misunderstood. Something. He's just misunderstood. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's the whole point of it, right? This is the whole point. Is Walter White was actually a good person, right? That's the whole point of the well, show. I, lo- I love the fact all. that it's like in the beginning or earlier on, they, they try to toy with the gray area more. It's like, mm-hmm. um, is he a bad guy? Is he doing just doing it for his family? You know what? Is it justifiable, some of the things? And then you get mm-hmm. to a point where it's like, obviously, that's not even the conversation anymore. It's just like, when yeah. will this man be stopped? And then at the end, he literally even cements it by what he says to Skylar, where he's like, I, I didn't yeah. do it for the family. I did it for me. Yeah, I, no, I, I did it for me. <laughs> it's like, yeah. all right, thank you. Tell it's him. Like, you get these, yeah. these Walter White loyalists out of here. <laughs> Tell him. Yeah, no, I, and I love, that. I love that he just is straight up. At it. He's like, no. It was for me. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm not even making making an excuse anymore. This is it was for me, and I. It's just so, so good at everything. Like I, um, Vince Gillian, just like just keep, what a, yeah. what a guy, you know, whatever, what a creator. It's a fascinating so, story of like you take this guy who is like the boring, um, boring life. And he's, this is not a young impressionable guy. You have this old guy well into his life, Mm middle-aged guy. And then you take him and like mold him into someone else completely different by the end of it, by the, Mm -hmm. this very concept of breaking bad, you know, and uh, it takes one little decision to just go more and more down to where he's a freaking drug kingpin by the end of it. Yeah. So, it was yeah, it's great, great show. Um, oh, and they do so much it, good stuff, like with even just like pulling you out again, where it's like, I'm I'm giving up the business. So it's like, okay, he's gonna go back to being a good guy. I don't know how you do that now, and he pretty much was until the rug mm-hmm. is pulled out out from under him in this most like uh, benign little decision that mm-hmm. like, comes out of left field. It's just really well done. Yeah. And then, like, from then, you get him to where he's at at the end, where he's, like, this whole persona, basically. Everyone knows Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just, like, I, I just really like... I think... Uh, I was talking with my with my friend Wesley, and because he's the one that, like, was really like, all right, you're going to watch this show. Like, I, I'm sick of having you tiptoe around it. I want you to just watch it. And he was pointing out something that was really interesting that, like, it was an episode. What was it? An episode of was the episode of the X Files, because Vince Gilligan became involved in the in the X Files later on. Yeah. Um, and I think it was an episode where Brian Cranston was in it. I think. Memory serves. I could be getting the details wrong, but it was something where it was like Brian Cranston was like an awful, horrible person, like a like a racist kind of, in the episode, and. The whole point, like Vince Gilligan basically straight up said, like, I wanted to make you to give you this horrible, vile person. 
And then I wanted by the end of it, you to feel kind of bad for him. Mm -hmm. And like, that seems to be like what he's really good at doing yeah. is giving you these characters that you should hate and yet still having you feel something for them. And like, that's what he does. Like, that's like the whole show. <laughs> Right, like he, he even does that with Hank. Hank is one of my favorite characters. Like Hank is like early on, you kind of think, oh, he's sort of like a, he's just like the hard cop. Yeah. He's kind of a racist and he's kind of a, a jerk and uh, whatever. But it's like Hank is like Hank is like kind of a is actually like a really good person <laughs> at the yeah. at the end of the day. Um, like he he's not perfect. Everybody's got their got their problems and hank is by no means a perfect person but a lot of his like a lot of his problems are more bluster than who he actually really is yes. and i i love exploration of of people of characters like that and i think that that whole show is just chock full of explorations of that sort of thing and i think that's it's that's why it's so fascinating that's why it's so that's why you're just so hooked on it from beginning to end. Um, so yeah, really good uh, character development and, and oh yeah yeah beautiful. Like all the characters have their have great arcs, pretty much. And um, yeah, you know what's funny about uh, Breaking Bad is when I first before I even started watching it, I was in a was it TV. TV appreciation class in college, mm. I think it was called. And he showed us the first episode of Breaking Bad. And then he said, I'm going to show you a scene from the last episode of Breaking Bad. It's got no spoilers, no spoilers or anything, but I'm going to show you a scene from the last, uh, last episode of Breaking Bad. I booked it out of that room. I was like, I'm going to the bathroom. Get me out of here. What? Yeah, why did he do that? Do, <laughs> like, do you, you know what the scene? <laughs> do you, yeah, what what kind of a monster would do that? What what what? Do you know what the scene that he showed was eventually? I don't know uh, the scene, I really don't. Okay. But I, I definitely came back in and it was still running a little bit, but I just kind of tuned yeah. it out as much as I could. Yeah, but it's like it definitely had it probably had one of the two main characters in it, or or like Walter. Had was it going to be like this? It was it going to be like the scene from like like where 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 Walter saves Jesse and then they just sort of like have that like acknowledgement of each other. It, despite the fact that season five, they hate, they, they're like, I know. they are extremely <laughs> opposed to each other. <laughs> like, like season five is like Jesse basically completely finally stands up for himself. Um, and it's great. I, I love, I love that. I actually love how, how that, like the last scene with them. One of the last scenes with them is, is Jesse being like, if, you're, if you want it to happen, do it yourself. Mm -hmm. like shoot yourself. Because, like, Walter's like, shoot me. And he's like, do it yourself. And it's like, oh, my God, Jesse's learned to stand up for himself. This poor, this poor man is finally through, he's gone through, li literally through every horrible thing you could possibly imagine. Yeah. But he, he finally learned to stand up for himself against Walter White. His, the person he was easily, most easily manipulated by. So... But that was, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, I really like that professor, but that was just very triggering to me. <laughs> it's like, I can't believe you would do such a <laughs> thing. Like, it's one of the best shows ever. Just, Why just would like you we do... were talking about last episode. No, no spoilers, please. Yeah, we'll have a spoiler warning for our what we just said. For yes, our yeah, that will flash up on screen. You, yeah, we will need to to do that for right. sure. Um, the uh, we said this in the last episode where it's like you can say no spoilers. But then have a scene where it shows like what ca characters that clearly survived the whole series. I mean, that's a spoiler right there. Is it your favorite? It's TV interesting. Show? Is it my favorite TV show? Uh, pro I mean, it's uh, it's up there. I mean, I don't know. I haven't like reassessed that in a long time. But like, I would say it's it's top three easily. Um, it, it's yeah, amazing. I mean, I can't stop raving about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't, like, there's not enough good things I could come and, and say about it. I feel like I, it's one thing that I think, speaking of back kind of on the, on the sort of spoiler talk, but it's, it's something that's really interesting. I've seen Breaking Bad memes for like forever. Yes. One thing that's kind of nice is that because all of them are sort of ripped from the context, I didn't really understand like where the context was, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Especially because I would say ninety percent of them come from season five. Yeah, right. 
almost all of them come from season five, as I've realized. There's like the Walter falling down in the in the desert during uh, during the what, what episode is that again? Um, uh, Ozymandias. Oz- Ozymandias. Yeah, there's him, there's that. There's uh, there's him yelling in the car, which is the episode right before that. Um, there's the uh, he can't keep getting away with this uh, of of Jesse screaming that. Um, there's I'm trying to think of what of, yeah, there's uh, getting away with this is definitely yeah, the most memorable that's, one to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, you. I definitely heard before yeah. watching the show that I am the one who knocks stuff. I'm the one who knocks. Yeah, that's from season four. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd heard. I'd heard that line. I just really. I didn't really know the context, but now it's like, oh, oh yeah, that's a great. First of all, that's a great line. Um, yes. Yeah, I I love that. It's just like everything that tells you everything about Walter There's White so many, right there. So it's, many great moments in the in the show. Just like really good at getting those captivating moments and i love i love a good drama in general it's probably my mm. favorite genre for a show and it just really takes those moments really well uh where you're just you're just hanging on to every word it's great yeah yeah big time but yeah you should definitely watch el camino i'm good yeah i that's the plan i'll probably watch it so i watched the last two episodes uh, with my friend Wesley, um, we watched the first like four or five one weekend. I went and visited, and he was like, "Hey, we're gonna watch this now." And I was like, "Okay, oh, hey. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, yeah, I'm not fighting. I'm not gonna put up a fight. It's been l- way too long since I've been saying, yeah, I should watch Breaking Bad.' Um, and now I'm really glad that I did. I'm very glad that I did. Um, and uh, yeah, can watch El El, uh, El Camino for sure. Can watch Better Call Saul also. Um, and uh, just gotta find the time. Yeah, I'll make time for that. I mean, I'll, I'll give. I've, I've already given it a, a couple of weeks here, so give Breaking Bad its time to sort of let let it sink in and sort of how I feel about it. I mean, I mean the, the the how I feel about it is so clear. It's just it's just basically like a perfect television show. Um, yeah, man. So it's I can't. Can't wait to see what Vince, even if even if whatever Vince Gilligan cooks up next, I know it's not going to be in this universe. He said he's basically done with it. I still am looking forward to whatever he cooks up next because he's made some good stuff um, in the, the course of the last 10, 15 years. So, For yeah. Sure. But I will say, uh, speaking of Aaron Paul, that uh, we did get some Black Mirror news. All right. Season six. Yeah. Yeah. On the channel, we've been going through Black Mirror. Uh, showing Alec the episodes. We're only one season behind now, which has got three episodes in it, plus the Bandersnatch movie. Um, but we had some season six news for a while now. They had a trailer. They said it was coming out in June. And uh, no episode information until recently. It's uh, There's three, right? If memory serves, there's three episodes? No. No. Oh, no. okay. There's I guess I didn't. five now. Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, there's like in the details of this article, it was like updating. It's like updating you all the latest mm-hmm. of Black Mirror. Apparently, mm-hmm. like EW got this exclusive where it had like the episode, some episode names and the plot descriptions of them. Mm-hmm. And, and I tried to stay away from the descriptions because you know it's not as fun, and you know what you're getting into. Yeah. Yeah. But it looks like five. Oh, like, five. Okay. Five. Going back to five. All right. So that's a new. I had, I had read three. I think I think I had read three titles, and I'm like, ah, I, I I shouldn't be looking at this anyway. I don't I don't like to look at the titles beforehand. So I don't. I actually don't even remember what any of them are called. Yeah. So I was just like, ah, I don't really care all that much. So, but it's five because I'm gonna watch it. So okay, it's five. Okay, all right. So that's actually we've never had five. It's always been three, four, six, six, three. So that's okay. If I was a pretty um, manageable size, at least. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that seemed like about how many, based on the trailer, how many things were going on there. Mm. Very curious about it. They had a bunch of different actors. The one that stands out for me is Aaron Paul. Um, yeah, easily. I don't, I don't have a list in front of me. I'm sure there were some other other ones. None that really I knew, but there the people have been saying it's a star-studded uh, cast we got going on here in Black Mirror Season 6. But that'll be fun. We haven't figured out exactly how we're going to do 
uh, season five, if we'll wait until the end of the season or if we'll be able to find the little pockets here and there to, to watch the three episodes. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, it would be nice to get to season How, six as we, soon as we could. Are we going to do Bandersnatch? I don't know if we've sort of talked about that really yes. a whole lot. Yes, we, we are. Okay. We definitely oh. should do Bandersnatch oh. as a How are we going to do that? Because I know it's – okay, just as a general review. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because, like, we're I, as far as I'm aware, we could get just like entirely different stories told to us that way. So it's interactive. So yeah, yeah and we don't have a way to sync it up perfectly, so we can do it together. Mm. Um, so we just have to do it separately, and then do like a movie review just sometime between now and whenever we just decide to do season five. Mm-hmm. So so essentially, it's kind of like four. We've got four episodes left. Right. It's basically right. an extended episode. But yeah, so that's coming right up. On. Right um, on. One thing I I read about recently is an old thing. Sometimes you go down these rabbit holes on YouTube for me. It's like mm-hmm. true crime. I was talking about this before the podcast. There's like these true crime rabbit holes I'll go down. Where it's like oh, jeez, yeah. This, this mother does something horrible. Um, you have some body cam footage or whatever, and then, and then it's the, on to the next thing and the next thing. <laughs> these this poor wow. couple was tortured or whatever. And like Jesus, there's something about yeah. these true crime stories that are really interesting, though. The but, one, the one true. Oh, sorry, keep going. But um, I'm gonna go off the true crime path. I honestly, oh. it's, it's like it's kind of I kind of want a different. It's not. Tr- true crime but it was an accident that happened i don't know if you ever heard about this on uh twilight zone the movie did you hear about this oh yeah yeah where uh, somebody died yeah in filming the it's, helicopter crash i think the helicopter crash yeah it's rough yeah, no, there's, I, there's footage of it that, too. Yeah. i never heard about it before but it's like i didn't know there was footage of it i did i did know that that happened yeah and and people died it's like they so. had they had a guy, and they had hired two children, like from the local area. I forget where they filmed it exactly, like Vietnam or something. Mm. They had hired these two children, and the freaking children died too, because this guy was carrying them. But the director was reportedly, like, even to the very end, was telling them to go lower, lower, and he was very reckless about the whole thing. Yeah, and like even when people were the the helicopter pilot was saying before that he was like he was uncomfortable with it, like there was he was like. The director was all hell bent on having these real effects, like practical mm. effects, explosions going on. The helicopter is coming really low, and this lighting and everything. And he was like, "I'm uncomfortable with it. Like, there's a lot going on here." And the director basically said, "You you haven't seen nothing yet." Like, he freaking dialed it yeah. up from there and ignored all these things. And you freaking, you can see just going, the helicopter just like loses control or something and just goes right down on him. Yeah, I mean, luckily you don't see anything awful. It's just kind of it's crazy to just to see. There's like in one frame, there's like a guy holding two children, and then just boom, they're gone. That's crazy. Yeah, well, that was like the there was a air show last year. There's a huge accident where like a, one of the huge uh, flying fortresses like got an accident and was like destroyed, and all the the whole crew on board all died. And, mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, it was like stuff like that is like really, really harrowing. Air, I think air disasters are always like that's they're always like super memorable for whatever reason. I think it's just because they're they're actually shockingly rare, um, and because because fly flight is such a spectacle, anyways. A lot of times they're they're footage or they're documented in some way. So, um, but it's horrible that the director never even had like no cons- consequences for that, basically. Yeah, like he went on trial yeah. and then basically he didn't, he wasn't held yeah. accountable at all. And yeah, like there's, I mean, there's from a, all accounts was just not being. It's, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, there's definitely. I mean, that's that's typically I think one of the one of the films that's regarded as having like an extremely cursed production because of I mean obviously because of that you know. Yeah, just crazy. I don't know how you live with yourself yeah. after doing something like that. Like these, it's just so sad. The children were were reportedly so excited about being on it, and like I heard yeah. the the parents like knew nothing about like all these this crazy stuff that was gonna be on set. Like they didn't tell them about it beforehand. 
like really horrible. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's that's awful. And uh, yeah, wow. there's stuff like that. I mean, I remember going back and I was really fixated on the whole the NASA. Remember the the NASA thing where it was like a teacher got to go on. Uh, Chris McAuliffe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the Challenger explosion. Yeah, the Challenger. Mm-hmm. That was that was crazy yeah. too. Because Krista McAuliffe uh, lived, she was a teacher in New Hampshire. Um, so the planetarium that's down in the southern part of the state named after her mm-hmm. because of that. So, um, which is great. Awful. That's actually an amazing museum. That's great. It's planetarium. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's all about all about her. She she died from from that. That is just that stuff that, like really gets to me. That's awful. Like yeah. Just imagine how excited she was, you know? It's just so sad to me. Yeah. And, like, the fact that everybody's just watching, like, celebrating it, that's, that's something so eerie about that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, I just go down these... I don't know why I do this to myself. I go down these um, rabbit <laughs> holes. I don't know what's so fascinating about these things. Like, this accident and, like, freaking... I had a whole trip down the freaking roller coaster and amusement park accident Rabbit oh, those are too. those are fa- those are fascinating. Oh, have you ever uh, have you ever looked into like Action Park? You live in New Jersey. You you surely you know Action Which Park. One? What's that one? Action Park is like the uh, it's like the one in the eighties that was just uh, it's like a water park, uh, but it's also like an extreme park too, where um, the uh, basically it was just like designed by a guy. Like all the ride, none of the rides were like tested or like made by actual engineers, but it was all made by like the guy who ran the park yeah, and, and he would like force employees to like test rides out to make sure they were safe mm. or whatever. I feel like I heard something about that. Yeah. There's like one of the, there's like one of the reported rides that, uh, where people would like, people started to like get, uh, uh, like cuts and stuff when they came out of it. And it was reported that they found out that it's because there was teeth embedded into the ride. And so people were getting cut on other people's teeth. <laughs> God. Stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, everyone talks about, like, how there's, like, a lot of nostalgia around Action Park, too, because, you know, people remember going there when they were kids, and, mm. and it was, like, yeah, exciting because like, yeah. it was dangerous. Um, but um, I think they, I think there's a documentary on it called Class Action Park, if memory mm. serves. Um, there's also a brief documentary uh, on YouTube by one of my very favorite YouTubers, uh, Defunct Land. Um, and he talks about uh, Action Park, and uh, very, uh, very highly recommend that channel just in general. Okay, um, he did a he did a video on uh, lines, like cues. So he did this whole scientific breakdown. It's like an hour and a half documentary on cues, and it's okay. awesome. And he did like an hour and a half documentary on the Disney Channel theme. Like the the mnemonic, the one, two, three, four, the four tone mnemonic, the bum 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 bum. It's about that. It's an hour and a half to almost two hour documentary on that, <laughs> and it's one of the best videos I've ever seen on YouTube. And I highly recommend that everyone watch it, um, especially if you have nostalgia for the Disney Channel like I do. Um, but even if you don't. Like I showed my parents and they, they do remember it because obviously we watched it growing up. And so they, but they were, you know, they were invested in it too. So for what that's worth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, There's like the freaking like this, there was a big unveiling for this. I wish you could remember the specific names of stuff, but like the freaking tallest, was the tallest water slide ever made or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Big unveiling for it. it was a big like media thing. And then, like, someone got straight up decapitated on it because they had freaking... Oh, jeez. <laughs> they had, like, nice. a netting over it, but, like, metal metal rods, like, over, like, connected with the netting. And so there's just, like, a way it came down and just freaking... It was horrible. And then, like, the family, like, waiting at the at the end of the slide is just awful. And, like, the, there was, like, the brother, brother next wow. to the boy who got decapitated on the ride. It's like... Cool. Jesus cool. Christ. That's there's so many so, awful that's so messed up. amusement park stories. Like, and I've heard, like, there's, like, Disney, some Disney World, Disneyland stuff. There's, like, stories, out, um, YouTube videos out there for those. Sure. I bet. Rough. 
It's rough out yeah. there. It's like I'm it's terrified of life. amusement parks now. I'm, I'm not. Like you ever? Did you hear that story? Just... It was pretty recent, like past year or two. It was like a guy who was like really a heavy set guy that they mm-hmm. let on this ride that he definitely shouldn't have been allowed on. Yeah, like a heart attack or something on the and ride, or it had like one of those uh, harnesses that go over. Yeah, but it was not locked in place, so it like oh, okay. it, it brings you all the way up and then uh, brings you down real quick. And he mm-hmm. just like fell right out of it. It was horrible. It was horrible. I hate. Um, I hate that <sighs> something about that stuff in particular really gets me because it's like, so yeah. people are doing stuff that are supposed to be really fun, you know, just like with like concert tragedies and stuff like that. It's like, that's especially yeah. awful. Well, there's a yeah. I mean, I think I think the the big thing about that is that there's the the element of danger i think is is part of the attraction to a lot of those those thrill rides i mean that's why they call them thrill rides i guess um yeah well the assumption but, there's no yeah they're really not supposed involved. to yeah yeah the the, assu- the assumption is that they should be safe there's enough safety measures in play but you know unfortunately you know nothing's perfect accidents happen and it's it sucks for and for like, everybody the fact that you're like give yourself your like it's just like going on a plane, you know, you're, you kind of just assume that the powers that be will, will, will work out. You have no control over it really. You know, you assume that mm-hmm. the ride operator will do everything right, proper procedures and everything. That the, they'll let you on. By all means, be... by all means, amusement park rides are probably about as safe as airplanes. Probably airplanes are actually safer, technically speaking, but you're, cause you're more likely to, what is it? What's the statistic where it's more you're more likely to die in the car on in your car on the way to the airport than you are on the plane, getting on the plane or whatever. Mm, right. There's statistics, statistics about that. So. But I mean, it's just yeah, the fact that you're you are putting yourself in such a vulnerable position in the sense that you have no control. Yeah. Like, um, you know. Yeah. And you just gotta trust. You gotta trust that everything's done properly. Yeah. So those things are crazy, yeah. You 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 totally reminded me about when you were mentioning true crime that there was like one, there was like one true crime thing that I got like super invested in, and it was like one that had happened like a while before I even was like reading up on it. But it was one that was just I just found really interesting. Um, I don't remember why. It's again I just sort of like just got into interested in down a rabbit hole, I guess. Uh, but it was one where I think it was this guy and like. Texas or something, he, like, killed his, like, wife and kid or something, Dude. and then, and then he, and then he, like, came kid. back and he, he reported it, and then you can, like, see on the, like, you can basically see on camera him, like, clearly, because he was, like, cheating on his, his wife or whatever, or they had, like, separated, but then he, like, came back and, like, killed her and the kid, and then... Or maybe it might have even been two kids. I don't even remember. I yeah, can't remember now. The pregnant, the pregnant wife, she was pregnant with a, a kid and mm, another kid. May, may, maybe, yeah, it might have been. And then, because then he reports it, and then the neighbors are like, "Yeah, we didn't like see anything. Like the doors were locked or whatever." And then he's, like, yeah. you could basically see like him more or less like on camera, like kind of like being super sus and stuff being like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the whole body cam footage and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I forget. Um. Um. I don't remember. I can't remember who who or what that was, but I do remember like being like really fascinated by that because then you also see the interrogation technique. So when he's brought in to be questioned by the police and stuff, like that is really interesting as well. Like seeing them then do their line of questioning to basically get him to kind of admit that he has something to do with it without him realizing it mm-hmm. by kind of by kind of appealing to his positive sense of sensibilities more or less you're able to just kind of build a foundation there is a kind of build a foundation to be like okay his story is not straight because he's admitting yeah. to some of this other stuff and it's like a very very interesting um you're talking about chris watts chris watts. that's it that's it yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was really That's into that too. It's kind of it's just yeah. that that stuff is really disturbing too because it's super. Yeah, well, that was really that one was like I think that's why I was into it because I was like this is like really creepy. It's creepy because he's just it, also the fact that like this wife, you know, they have like video of her on social media, like saying I have the best husband ever and all this stuff, 
it's just so scary that yeah you know you can go from that to just he wanted to start a new life basically so he just decides to kill this pregnant wife and his child like with his own hands that's crazy yeah so messed up and like while he's like texting his new side piece or whatever like in the in the footage of like when he's ta- like with the neighbors and stuff, it's like you can see him like texting people. It's her, obviously, but so messed up. It's like, dude, it's yeah, crazy. But that stuff is yeah. I I found that like looking like re- watching up on all that stuff was like really interesting it's to me. Wilder so. than fiction type stuff. Like a lot of these true crime, you'd be surprised Kinda, yeah. that they're real, crazy yeah. stuff. Like there was one guy. I forget the details of it where he like straight up disfigured himself just to hide his identity. Uh, like uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. But I mean, there's obviously so much to go into there. I know there's true crime podcasts out there. Oh yeah. For that reason. Get a, uh, um, embrace your inner white girl. Um, and be, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, get into that sort of stuff. But and that's the only, yeah, it's not normally normally of that kind of true crime freaking shit that i get addicted to like the freaking stalker stories and the god i mean yeah nah it's definitely give you yeah, it's not really my th- it's not really my thing but like i can i haven't gotten into like the chris watts stuff like i can i guess i think i can sort of understand the appeal yeah um it's just not really something i tend to seek out a ton of um i mean it's not fun uh, it's not a fun time you know you gotta be <laughs> I don't know what it is. My mom loves watching like true crime and like documentaries and stuff. But I don't know. Uh, what would say you? Uh, what say you that we reflect on some of the the videos? I say I say we should do that. It's getting it's getting late. I'm a sleepy little boy. I gotta go to bed at some point here. So, so the past the past month we t- torn through a bunch of Harry Potter's, uh, four more it's Harry Potter movies. It's been great. It's been we, great. We just I've really finished it up finally. The, all the main yeah. reporters. Yeah, it's it's been great. Uh, I it's, it's no secret. If you know me, you know that I'm a I'm basically a Potterhead. I love Harry Potter. Always always have. I don't want to say always have. It was because it was after. You know, I grew up in the, in a time period where uh, you know Christians thought Harry Potter was of the devil. Harry Potter is from the devil. Yes. And, uh, you know, and then you actually, like, sat down and watched the movie, and you're like, oh. Oh, no, that's just bullshit. <laughs> that's just a load of, load of fish paste, you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a load of nonsense. And then you read the books, and you're like, oh. No, these are actually really good and well-written. Good, They're good children's books. Mm-hmm. And that, and that, sure. that's a whole lot of horseradish. So, yeah. So it's been, it's been wonderful revisiting that uh, time, that era yeah. of film and of my life. And I'm sure it's been fun for you too. Definitely, definitely been fun. Um, because you know, I, I was always, I always liked Harry Potter growing up, and I'd watched all the movies, but to really get reacquainted with it and to be able to know it now. It's, mm. it's definitely cool and i've enjoyed pretty much all of them pretty much all of them yeah now we got to do a tarkaron cross the talker brothers uh, trivia battle where we would destroy them <laughs> I don't, I, would i destroy them i don't think so i would no you, you don't you, you would just be on my team but it's just me hmm. it's just just you just have to rely on if me if you're able to carry yeah I'll, if it doesn't yeah. like we have to both participate yeah <laughs> i'll i'll try to carry us and then uh yeah. The end of season four, Black Mirror. We finished that up. Yep. So we did a did kind of a recap review of that, and we sort of solidified our rankings in terms of the episodes. Um, we did the last couple episodes too. Episode uh, five, Metalhead. Episode six, Black Museum, were this month. And yeah, not the not the not best not month. The, not for, the best, but not the best. But. <laughs> uh, Survivor. We did. Uh, a, f- a couple of survivor videos leading up to, and then we did Cook Islands episode one of Cook Islands. We did mm. another Survivor Funny one fifteen, and we had Alec pick his top ten favorite Survivor players. So, 
I had a lot of fun doing that. I was actually just watching that video earlier today. Um, threw it on while I was at work, and um, it was like, yeah, this is this is fun. I really like doing that. It was a lot of fun to to sort of dig in and, and sort of think about where I rank different people. And um, I I like the fact that I ended up with twenty five when I was done selecting because I feel like that's pretty representative of my top 25 so i guess if you wanted to see my in no particular order top 25 yeah there, there you have them yeah we'll definitely do more fun one-off survivor videos like that too whenever we get the chance mm. but cook Islands, we started with the premiere and that's what a great way to start off a lot of yeah. big discussion on that one yeah we, we yeah we talked for a while about that i i I was thinking like partway th like almost towards the end of when we were talking i was like wow we've i just realized we've been talking about this episode for quite a while and we haven't even talked about like we just sort of talking about like the general idea behind it more than yeah. even just the episode itself. And I mean, it's worth, I think it's worth delving into. So yeah. For sure. And we'll be able to talk more about it as it develops. And then the last thing really sure. worth mentioning of the videos we put out was the Peter Pan and Wendy review that Rusty joined us for. Yeah, that was, uh, it was a lot of fun to have Rusty along to suffer along with us, really, honestly. Uh, yeah, if you... why we always come together just yeah. to suffer every time. Yeah, it was, it was great. It's really too bad. Like the, we were having some technical difficulties while we were recording that, but it was still kind of nice to just hang out with Rusty. Um, as, as we're speaking right now, he's off in Japan right yeah, now. Man. So he we're, uh, more videos he's posting doing crane yeah. games and whatnot. Doing crane games in Japan with Lauren. It's a it's an addiction. I know. I watch Sea Dog VA. He's every every single one of his YouTube friends he brings along to do a crane game competition with. Mm -hmm. So um, they look they looks like so much fun. Yeah, so I know. I um, yeah. We have crane games here on our our boardwalks, and they're I mm. love those. So I can only imagine. Yeah. All right, let's read some comments. We don't we don't have uh, do that it. many, but okay. Um, on the Super Mario Bros. movie review, um, Zach Milne Talks Movies commented, This movie was incredibly delightful. It did what it needed to do and brought the game to life on the big screen almost perfectly. I was smiling the entire time and I'm looking forward to the inevitable sequels. Yeah, I totally agree. I think I even said that. Like, I was smiling through the whole movie. I didn't yeah, stop smiling through the whole one. movie. I, it's, just, I, it's just delightful. It's a feel-good one for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just for fun, 7112 commented. <laughs> you know that emoji that's like, they're making the face like, oh, and they got the puff of smoke coming out. Like, oh, yeah. The, it's like the. Like, whew. Yeah, the exhaust. Yeah. 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 They said, if Disney make the Mario movie, they will make Bowser fall in love with Mario. And then three of those emojis. Okay. <laughs> it's a weird thing to say, but <laughs> what a weird thing to say. That's a weird thing to Thanks say. So I mean, I think I get what you're saying because, like, Disney has sort of like a woke agenda or whatever. <laughs> well, what's I, which I kind that? of, which <laughs> I kind of, I, which I, which I sort of agree with, and I, I'm not like overly keen on, but like, I don't know. That's I'm, there's like I don't think that's. Beast. Um, yeah, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, that's what be. reality stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Speaking of which, did you actually see the? Um, they released the first bit of footage from the Little Mermaid, the the under the sea. They they, sh they released the first bit of footage from that. This is a new thing. And even new uh huh. Thing? No. Uh huh. It was really bad. Under the sea. It made me really sad. Why do you keep watching more footage? Like you need to, you need to get, uh, you need to get a. Premium. I can't, I can't help it when it gets shoved in my face. I can't help it. Who's shoving? And especially something like this, face? and something like this where it's like I'm, I'm this, this to me is going to be the. I mean, it's going to make, it's going to make billions of dollars probably somehow still. Top five. But I, I'm like I want this to be good because I think that because the Little Mermaid is a good movie. It's like it, it was the sole purpose that Disney still makes like animated films, which I guess is now, I suppose you could look at it now as that, that the little mermaid is the reason that Disney is now remaking live action films because they wouldn't exist in the state that they do today. Had it not been for the little mermaid. So sort of reviving their animation studios. And I think that like, it's, 
I want it to be good, but uh, unfortunately, I I don't I don't know, man. I'm really scared. I'm really having seen that footage. I'm real scared now because. Do you remember how Under the Sea starts in in the in the original movie? No. How Sebastian's like tuning an orchestra and he's coming in and then like looks like it's going to be prim and proper and then boom he gets all of the sea animals in and they're oh they're performing this fun like this fun like Jama- with a Jamaican beat and they're having this really good time and it's like this all up high energy number. Ariel literally like lies down on a rock in the middle of the song. Mm-hmm. There's no energy to anything, and it made me so <laughs> okay. worried. We'll see. I'm scared. We'll I'm scared, see. Zach. I, I, I don't think it's... Yeah. You know. <laughs> All right. Um, on the Talk Room Podcast episode four, Chase Ferrier commented, Thanks for reading my comment. Didn't realize they created an entire new season, Pear Islands. LOL. And speaking of Pascal, oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Speaking of Pascal, I did hear this again with all these random tidbits. I don't know when to mention them exactly. Mm. But he resigned from being a judge a while back for having a relationship with a younger public defender. Oh, okay. <laughs> Some sort of like conflict of interest thing that was going on. Yeah. Like... <laughs> it's a little bit, a little bit there. Yep. Yeah, I forget what it was exactly how much younger she was. But I remember being pretty significant pascal you dog <laughs> <laughs> on our black mirror uh shut up and dance reaction someone commented oof this is not a reaction this is a review misleading title for sure <laughs> okay well. uh, i told him i think you're confused just read the description um i don't know if you're joking yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> uh, i assume what they did is they skimmed the, the video and saw there was yeah. no reaction because it's the yeah. link in the description. Mm-hmm. Cool. At least read the. At least take the time to read the description first. Yeah. No, but don't do that. Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> Someone commented on our Black Mirror "Hate in the Nation" reaction. Uh, this is Har- the Hardy Band three five eight seven. Said loving these reactions, especially love the in depth discussion. Great stuff. Yeah. Thank you. And then uh, he had also commented on the crocodile reaction. He said it's Scotland. Because I remember we were talking about where, where was it taking place, uh, for sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Scotland. Scotland. Yeah. On our Peter Pan and Wendy review, Jimmy Lee nine one two zero commented another woke pile of garbage from Disney. Who would have thought? Laughing, crying emojis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I sort of alluded to it in the review. Yeah, it's kind of what it is, and it's a shame, um, but. It's it's kind of it's kind of to be expected at this point, and it's, it's disappointing because I think they stuff's got a lot of potential. Yeah, woke, but they woke, just but woke isn't what did it in. I mean, I get the whole woke thing, but I, I almost hate woke just as much as anti woke. Uh, they're both cringy to me because Pinocchio. There's nothing pin- woke about Pinocchio. There's nothing so woke bad. about Pinocchio. It was just yeah, that was just awful. I was just it was just that was just an embarrassment. <laughs> it was just King, embarrassing. 2019 version. I didn't. I I can't. I can't speak to. Of lying. I can't. (laughs) It's the woke lying. I can't speak to that. I never. I still haven't seen it. So. Yeah, but that's. I'm assuming that's just boring. From what everyone said about it, it's just dull and lifeless. Yeah, there's no expression on these lions' faces. (laughs) Um, and then lastly. They did in the Jungle Book. They had expressions on their faces. They did. They somehow pulled it off. Lastly. On the Peter Pan and Wendy review, Jamie Santos says, please do a reaction of Peter Pan 2003 for comparison. This means a review, but... Would be, yeah, but it would be, uh, it would be interesting. I think, especially with Rusty's uh, sort of talking about that, where he was very fond of that one. So we do a Peter Pan redemption session and then a Pinocchio redemption session where we do Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio and then yeah, balance it that out. That would be fun. <laughs> I'd like that. Yeah. It'd be fun to do. I've uh, My Wesley, who was mentioning earlier in the episode, uh, has nothing but good things to say about the Guillermo del Toro Pinocchio. So mm-hmm. uh, my, friend, my friend Josh was also uh, I believe was rave, raving about it recently too, so um yeah uh i definitely definitely interested in that and yeah 
we'll have to see. You have to see. I would like. I'd like to have that. Like redemption sessions. I think that that might be a fun thing to do in the fall. Maybe. We need so. redemption. What else do we need redemption for? Well, we could just we could also just review the original. You know, Lion King. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the only that's the way to redeem. Most we can watch ha- Hamlet. We watch Hamlet. Uh, <laughs> that's 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 what you do with we the Lion King. See a live that's production what... of Hamlet. We go see a. <laughs> <laughs> we go see the Lion King on Broadway. <laughs> I did. I did see Lion King on Broadway. So yeah, I know you did. That's pretty cool. It's really good. Pretty exciting. So. Yeah. You know, but All right, well, that's it for the cool. podcast, all right? Yeah, a little shorter this week. A little shorter. Uh, so. Yeah, it's, that's okay. That's good. I, I need, I need to go to sleep. Sleep. I'm a sleepy little boy. I'm a little, little kid. The world we, we, takes we, a lot out of you. You know, it does. And it I mean, like I said. Back. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, that's one of the things. That's one of the reasons why I want to do that. I want to do that that birthday thing because like that is the world giving back to me in in a certain way. So then I want to show them the appreciation that I have for her and the content that she does and the and the people that I have been spending time with, except for the last two weeks where I've had no time to even do the, the even participate in the Discord hardly at all. Mm-hmm. Um, except for a Puyo Puyo Tetris Two tournament, which I participated in. I didn't talk about that. Yeah, I did okay. I won my first round and then I got slaughtered the second round. So I didn't do a Tetris winning blood proud. So mm-hmm. my dad's my dad's pretty good or was pretty good at Tetris. I don't know about these days, but I'm good at Tetris. I don't know about Puyo Puyo yeah. Tetris. Well, you don't have to. So here's the thing. The great part about that game is that you can, depending on the mode, you can just play Tetris. Uh-huh. Okay. In versus mode, you can decide, you can decide to do one or the other. Cool. Um, so yeah. Also, I also went to the Philadelphia Zoo the past week. I mean, that was fun. Oh, that's cool. It's a lot of stuff there. Mmm. The zoos are zoos are pretty sweet. All right, get me out of here. All right. All right. Catch you. Catch y'all later. Oh yeah. Subscribe right. to the channel you, if you enjoyed. You. Subscribe to our podcast feed. Like the video. Leave a comment. And we'll respond to the next episode. You know, hit the notification bell and do all that stuff. All right. All right.